This is the Pioneer's natural state. Very, very muddy. When you're riding through mud, you can see down in the back, mud gets everywhere. That's where these nets come in handy. These nets will block some of the mud, they block the branches, but they won't block the majority of it. I've been threatening for about three months now to put some uh, fender guards on here that'll stop a lot of this mud. They stick out about three or four inches. I'm gonna do that this week. So you can see how nasty it is. We went through a dozen or so mud holes last night. I partially washed the front of it and then I thought, well, maybe I should get a little video showing just how nasty it gets. Um, but you know, even with all this mud and it gets everywhere, the Pioneer runs great. It never misses a beat. Um, I looked at my radiator to see if it got muddy and blocked and it didn't. This is a great design because no matter how dirty you get it, it uh, still performs great. And I mean, dirt gets up in all the um, joints, all the little cracks, crevices. Dirt even got up in the tailpipe and uh, still runs great. That's the mark of a good machine. Sitting here in the Pioneer thinking about all the accessories I bought. The only things I bought I really don't like are these side mirrors. And um, the side mirrors are just flimsy. They look great when I bought them. For a couple of months they were good, but there's a, a, a rubber, I don't know what you call this thing. There's a piece of rubber that wraps around the bar inside the housing there on the bracket, and it just doesn't grab, especially when it gets wet. You can see how loose it is. And uh, no matter how much you tighten this up, you can't get it tight enough. So every limb you go past hits this mirror and pushes it and weakens it. And you can see what happens over time. The uh, mirror, the housing that holds it on, walks down and this rubber starts to slip out. And that's happened on both sides. This side is a whole lot worse. Anyhow, I'm gonna get some better mirrors, but uh, otherwise all the accessories I bought for the Pioneer have been great. Mr. Pioneer is clean. Well, cleaner anyhow. I got all the mud off of it, looking good. Now, uh, this machine is made for mud. I've got friends that'll take their Pioneer out, run it down a gravel road for 15 minutes and then get all upset because it has some dirt on it. That's not gonna hurt these machines. They're really tough. I've been very happy with this clearly tough windshield. It's got water all over it because I just washed it. Um, this windshield is great. A lot of windshields will turn white after a year or so and they sit out in the sun. I've had this windshield for, let's see, I got it in um, late December of 2019. So I've had it for about a year and a half. The roof is good. I broke my light off my roof. I had my light mounted right there and I ran under a tree and broke it off. So what I'm gonna do is mount my light right here. I might even do that today. Anyhow, these machines are really tough. Um, they handle mud, dirt really well. A little bit of dirt's not gonna hurt it. I had a lot of weeds up in here I had to clean out, up in uh, both uh, brake areas and axles. I'm going to put some stick stoppers right here. I should have done that already. And I found another problem. If you're in high weeds, weeds can go up in here, right in there, and get into your radiator up there. So it took me about 20 minutes to clean out my radiator. But this is a great machine. Um, I've got the back inclined right now because I washed it out. There's still some mud on it, but that's okay. Anyhow, these night lights I've got on the back have been working really good. I've been very pleased with them. They saved me from driving off a cliff one time, not too long ago when I backed up to an area that I should have never gone into. Okay, we're back at the backhoe, my favorite pastime. All right, we're gonna try again for the third time to replace this. I had to go back to my Caterpillar dealer and uh, get the correct part. Last time they gave me the wrong part. So first thing we got to do is get the uh, air breather out of the way. So let's do that. All right. All right. Set that up there. Let's put you down here. Maybe if I put you down here, you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Right there. All right. this guy out of here uh, 
Let's see if we can put some more light on this. All right, I got my DigiPower light here. Let's put this on top of the GoPro. Maybe that'll help out. Oh yeah, that's great. There we go, plenty of light. Now, last time I took this out, hydraulic fluid got all, not hydraulic fluid, uh, coolant got all over me. Let's see if we can do this this time without wasting a lot of coolant. Just take the old one out, put the new one in, and it looks like I'm still losing a ton of coolant. That's okay. I can get more antifreeze. I'm going to actually come back later, redo this, and put some Teflon tape on it. But for now, I just need to get it in here so I can crank the backhoe and uh, pull the bridge up out of the creek. Uh, there we go. That's good. Now let's um, put some more coolant in. That's good. Geez, that's a strong magnet. All right, now let's try and crank this thing. Well, I guess I should go ahead and put the uh, put the breather back on first. Let's get that on. Here's the old uh, temperature switch. Some people call this a sensor switch, whichever. That's the old one. This, geez, that magnet strong. I can't hardly get the GoPro off. Okay, this is one of those screw-on clamps, hose clamp. I'm trying to tighten down. All right, that's done. Let's see. Right here, you can see the uh, watch glass. I'm low in hydraulic fluid, so low I'm not even reading, but. Right now, I just want to get this guy cranked and uh, move it. So let's get that going. All right. Come on and crank, buddy. Get out my key. Got to prime it. It's 
almost like it's not getting diesel. Alright, let's prime it again. I may have to spray some ether. This is liquid crank. You can crank it with this. All right. That's a can of starter fluid I keep on the back hoe because it's always tough to crank, especially after it's been in wet conditions. Oh yeah, it loves that. Loves that starting fluid, but it burns through it really fast. Okay, I decided to uh, wait and do that tomorrow. It's already 7, 30, 7, 40. Um, I've got somebody coming to help me in the morning, so I think I'm gonna try and just uh, wait and do that tomorrow morning. And tonight, maybe uh, jump on the Pioneer and take a ride around, see what the property looks like. We had a lot of rain in the last few days. I know it's very wet, so uh, let's go take a ride and see what we can find. Here's an update on my seat covers. This is the uh, fifth version that I've had made of these seat covers. I uh, hand cut the first couple and I taped them together. It took me a long time to find someone to actually make the seat cover. I talked to, uh, I think, four different upholstery places. Uh, one of them kept my seats for a week or so and uh, finally told me they couldn't do it, that what I wanted couldn't be done. Anyhow, after making a lot of phone calls, talking to a lot of people, I finally found someone to make them. And they look great. They're form-fitting. They cover the original Pioneer seats. And these seat covers are made for the uh, Honda Pioneer 700 four-seater. So I had the backrest made also. I'm, I took this headrest off because I'm actually going to have a, a headrest cover made. There's the headrest right there for the Pioneer. Anyhow, these seat covers are uh, great. They protect your original seats. So they have elastic on the bottom, and I'm gonna have one more version of these seat covers made. Um, they have cutouts for your supports. We're actually gonna cut around this to uh, fit that pedestal support. It's got cutouts for the little knobbies that um, go in right there to hold your seats. Anyhow, they're nice and form-fitting. Um, they've got a Velcro on them, and this Velcro is not perfect. We're actually gonna put uh, size, both, both pieces of the Velcro the same size. We're gonna make probably one more version of these, and then I'm gonna try and sell them on Amazon. 
um, or maybe eBay, but uh, they work great and um, they're very rugged. The seat cover is made out of marine vinyl. It'll uh, withstand a dog's claws. A lot of people that have the Pioneer end up carrying their best friend around with them a lot. So the seat covers stand up to dog's paws really good. They handle sunlight really good. We're also gonna put some uh, hanging pockets that hang down front and that attach on the underside with Velcro so that they can be removed if necessary. But there's not a lot of storage in the Honda Pioneer. So if we have pockets down here across the front, you can actually put a cell phone or maybe a drink or something like that. And the reason we're gonna make um, padded cushions to go on the headrest is because people who ride in the Honda Pioneer are not known to be gentle or overly cautious. And it's inevitable that your head hits the back of the headrest and there's just not much cushion there. So we're gonna put some cushion in the headrest. Anyhow, they look good. I'm very pleased with them. We're gonna have uh, one more version made and then uh, hopefully start selling these. So thanks for watching.